Welcome to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic, where we're going to take a look at Elon Musk's net worth. Depending on which real-time billionaires list you subscribe to, Musk is currently either occupying the number two or number three position of wealthiest persons in the world. Here we've got the Bloomberg Index and the Fortune.com equivalent. Thanks to a tanking in Tesla stock year-to-date, Musk dropped from the number one spot this week on both lists, which have his net worth somewhere in the region of $200 billion. But how realistic is that number for Musk? With Bezos also in the top three, it's much easier to come up with a number just based on his shares in Amazon. He owns roughly 9% of the company, and today the market cap of Amazon sat about $1.8 trillion. So call it $170 billion in Amazon alone, never mind his stake in Blue Origin or any other venture. Zuckerberg, also in the top five, same deal. He's got over 13% ownership of Meta with a $1.25 trillion valuation, thanks to a steep growth curve year to date. So $172 billion for him, give or take, in line with the $172 attributed by Forbes, short of the $179 according to Bloomberg, and Zuck obviously would have other assets to throw into that mix. But Musk, of course, is spread across hell's half acre with his business ventures. So let's see if we can dig up enough information to get Musk anywhere near where these articles put him. According to most sources, half of Musk's wealth is attributed to his Tesla holdings. After losing his $56 billion options package, which was being added to this tally previously, Musk is stuck holding only 12.91% of the company after selling a large portion of his holdings in Tesla to buy Twitter. At today's trading price of around 180 per share, Tesla's 3,176,000,000 shares hold a market cap around $575 billion. 12.91% of that valuation earns him $77.3 billion, roughly a third of the $200 billion total wealth attributed to him. Of course, today's share value doesn't mean that he could liquidate all of that for that total amount, and neither are these shares even free and clear for him to sell. According to Forbes, half of his Tesla shares are collateral against personal loans that Musk has taken out, but this frame has not been updated since Musk still had 21% of shares in the company, and the frame doesn't say what the loans were for. So for the time being, we're going to knock the number down to about $38.5 billion and add back up from there as we go down the list. But first, a quick note on Tesla shares. We all know that Tesla has been hyped to the moon and back, built on, let's call it, wishful thinking. It's one of the few remaining COVID bubble stocks that tries, for whatever reason, to convince people that it is not an automaker. But we're going to run an automaker comparison on it anyway against BMW, another worldwide automaker with roughly the same number of units sold in 2023. Last year, Tesla delivered about 1,808,581 vehicles. BMW delivered 2,555,341 vehicles in the same time frame across all product lines. BMW, as of the time of release, had a market cap of $77.34 billion. Tesla had a market cap of $572 billion. See where this is going? A simple, unscientific metric we can run here is the value per car produced compared to the valuation of the company. For BMW, dividing the market cap by units sold would come to about 30,266 per car. For Tesla, that number at 180 per share is $316,270 per car, 10 times that of BMW. If you gave Tesla the same ratio per car as BMW, their market cap would plummet to 54 billion 738 512 546, and with 3 billion shares outstanding, would result in a share price of $17.23 per share. That would give Musk an equity stake in Tesla of only $7,066,741,969. Still a very reasonable return on the money that he used to buy the chair of the company way back in the beginning during the Series A round. This is a direct comparison against a competing car company who is poised to sell half a million EVs in 2024 on top of their regular product line. If you wanted to run numbers against any other car company, the results would likely be very similar. But for now, the Tesla stock price is about 180, so that's what we're going to work with. We know that Musk sold some Tesla shares, leveraged others, and took out additional loans against his newest crown jewel, Twitter, which seems to occupy 90% of his time these days. That vanity purchase, costing around 44 billion, 
required using Musk's money and approximately $12.5 billion of banker's money to complete. Less than 18 months onward, according to Musk, that company now holds a valuation of as little as $4 billion. Bankers holding the debt recently held undisclosed talks with Musk about how to secure the money they lent him, seeing as how their debt load is more than three times the current value of the company at an annual interest rate of 11.75% on the previously unsecured loan. A new security demand would likely come in the form of more collateral, which would have to be in the form of Tesla stock, as Musk's most easily liquidated holding. And of course, all the money Musk put into the company has evaporated, since the company is now worth 90% less than what he paid for it, and that number is probably generous. $12.5 billion in debt, taken from the $4 billion valuation of an asset, gives Musk a net negative of $8.5 billion, and ongoing interest payments in excess of $1 billion per year. That takes the ongoing tally down to $30 billion. Moving on to SpaceX, Musk holds 42% of that company, which is not publicly traded, and the company has done non-stop venture capital raises over the years, tallying about $2 billion per year, which would indicate to a reasonable person that SpaceX is not profitable. The most recent raise was three months ago in December 2023, so there should be another one expected shortly. The question is, how does a company not turning a profit in a very limited market attract their current valuation of $180 billion. Quite simply, that number is attained by multiplying the number of shares in the company by the price that the last fool paid for one. And on each consecutive raise for SpaceX, the cost per share has climbed, despite what can only be described as limited progress in their flagship program, Starship. Now, considering Musk has 42% equity in the company to go along with his 79% voting control, 42% of $180 billion is $75.6 billion. But that's assuming the valuation of SpaceX is anywhere close to reality. To determine that, let's check some figures and see where SpaceX's money comes from. PayloadSpace.com released an article on January 24th of 2024, estimating the company's 2023 revenue, which included a $3 billion downgrade from their previous forecast. They broke down all the revenue streams for SpaceX based on factors they laid out in their article. They came to an estimate of $8.721 billion in revenue across all facets of operation. That gives the company a valuation to income of $20.7 to 1. That's consumer tech territory, between Apple with their P.E. ratio sitting at 27 and Sony's at 17.6. But that $8.721 billion is gross revenue. You notice that, for example, there were 63 Starlink launches that produced no income, but the expenses for them were not accounted for either. Same for the satellites being launched, no accounting for production cost. In the Starlink category, they tally up the number of units sold and subscriber count, but don't apply the cost per unit to manufacture or distribute the operating hardware used on the ground. Looking at the two previous years, operating expenses in 2021 accounted for approximately 70% of revenue, with R&D taking away from that number, giving the company a billion dollar loss. In 2022, operating expenses were also in the neighborhood of 70%, with R&D again knocking the tally down into a loss of a half a billion dollars on the year. So it is entirely reasonable to expect 70% of that $8.721 billion to be eaten up in operating expense, dropping the core profit down to $2.62 billion, which we'll use as the best profit case scenario for the company if it had no R&D expenses, although we know that Starship development alone is costing SpaceX $2 billion per year, according to Musk. Using those rough numbers, SpaceX might have pulled out a $600 million profit, but it is more likely that they lost money again. Using United Launch Alliance as a comparable, according to The Motley Fool in 2023, ULA made a respectable profit of $200 million on $1.3 billion in revenue, over 15% in new profit. That company is looking to be acquired by Jeff Bezos at Blue Origin, with guesses for the company's valuation ranging from 1x to 6x of their 2023 gross revenue, providing a range of $1.2 to $7.2 billion. General Consensus has the offer at around 4x or $5.2 billion. If those ratios were being used straight across for SpaceX, it would be worth somewhere between $8.7 billion and $52.2 billion, with a consensus rating around $36 billion. One-fifth of the current valuation used to raise capital for SpaceX in December of 2023. 
And if the company is more realistically worth one-fifth of the current valuation, then so too is Musk's equity in it, taking his 42% equity stake down to $15.1 billion. Now we've got a long way to go to hit that $200 billion mark. What else is there to add to his tally? Let's go to the Boring Company. Of course, the Boring Company is most famous for the Vegas Loop project that it completed three years ago in 2021. Cost of that project was $55 million. TBC have been granted expansion contracts to that system, although, to our knowledge, they are not yet operational. They have also bid on other projects across the U.S., but none of these projects have moved forward, with several cities now disappointed that the company ghosted them after accepting the company's proposal. According to Zipia, the Boring Company's annual revenue in 2023, before expenses, is $2.7 million, and the associated valuation that Musk attributes to that company $7 billion, based again on recent tender offer raises. 2,600 times the annual gross revenue for that company in 2023. According to Wiki, Musk held 90% of equity in this company that was spun off from SpaceX, which would give Musk $6.3 billion in equity in this off-the-shelf tunnel drilling company. But if you were to take the annual income of this company and apply an extremely generous 10x valuation to current revenue, you still only get to $27 million, with Musk's share of it totaling 24.3. This company gets no further quarter from us. Charitably, the company is worth less than $30 million, so add that $24.3 million to his tally. Can you believe that he actually had the gall in 2023 to agree with Warren Redlick's assessment that Boring Company could IPO before 2030 as a trillion dollar company? Sheer delusion. And Delusion segues nicely into Neuralink, a company that has made some fantastical promises over the years, despite its original core mission. Neuralink was originally founded by a team of medical experts and engineers to create a BMI, a brain-machine interface that would allow paralyzed persons to regain use of their limbs. When we went to the wiki page for Neuralink, we were surprised to see the names of the original founders have all been scrubbed from the file. But thanks to Tay Ray on Twitter, who went back through the archives, we can tell you their names again. Max Hodak, Ben Rappaport, Don Jin Sao, Paul Marola, Philip Sabez, Tim Gardner, Tim Hansen, and Vanessa Tolosa. At last report, all of these founders, except for DJ Sao, had left the company, despite many of them having their names on the patents for Neuralink technology, which they were developing for medical purposes. Then Musk came along and the declared purpose of that company became to promise every superhuman ability in every brain-related sci-fi movie under the sun. The Matrix, Total Recall, The Resurrection of Picard, humans through Neuralink could download abilities, upload memories, and live forever through digital golems. That's what he claimed. Now, to date, the company has no products available on the market, and despite having claimed to have performed a procedure on a human patient in January of 2024, after having killed 1,500 animals in previous testing protocols. There has been no release of details about that patient, no third-party verification of the procedure, and no peer reviews of either the tech or the operation. No name has been released and no details other than Musk claiming the patient can now move a computer mouse with their mind, which has been possible for decades without invasive surgery. All of which makes the private company valuation of $5 billion for Neuralink highly illogical. Exact numbers for what percentage Musk owns in the company are sketchy, but he is declared to be a majority shareholder thanks to his original $100 million in funding. The funding round he participated in was for $158 million, which would give Musk about 63% ownership in the company, or $3.15 billion according to the highly inflated valuation. But there is no reason to believe that this company has, to date, increased its value by a factor of 31.6 times since inception. So how do you evaluate a medical device company that has no sales, a secretive method of operation, and a history of murdering the vast majority of its trial animals, while also considering that none of Musk's promised applications remotely resemble reality? We did a Google search for similar companies to Neuralink, and the website CB Insights gave us a couple options. First on the list is a company named Kernel, a company that has developed a non-invasive neuroimaging headset, so not exactly a direct comparison to having a robot core out a section of your skull to replace it with a Fitbit, but apparently it works for this purpose. This company may actually be of interest to Musk, 
given that their headset has the ability to measure the acute effect of ketamine on the human brain. It also tracks alcohol impairment, depression, and cognitive decline. So it might be an idea for his birthday that's coming up in June. According to Crunchbase, Colonel also raised $158 million across three funding rounds and six investors, but they have a developed, reviewed product. The Colonel Flow 2 headset is available for sale at a cost of $99,200 plus taxes. Crunchbase gives this company a post-money valuation somewhere between $100 million and $500 million. Neuralink has no products available for purchase, so using this example, it's unreasonable to apply a multi-billion dollar valuation to it. Let's try a different company from the CB Insight list. Another comparable is Paradromics, provides BMI devices, and they raised $108.4 million across 14 funding rounds. Their devices are designed for treating neurological conditions or injuries, not downloading martial arts directly into your brain. I know Kung Fu. Show me. Paradromics are considered a direct competitor to Neuralink as a brain implant device with a smaller profile, and they did garner an FDA breakthrough device designation in May of 2023. Paradromics also has a $100 to $500 million spread on their current private company valuation on Crunchbase, and they're looking to IPO in the near future. Once again, this comparable does not support a multi-billion dollar valuation for Neuralink. Even though they have no products for sale, to be completely conservative in our number, we'll assign it the highest value applied to either of these two comps, at $500 million, which would give Musk's initial 63% of the company a $315 million equity stake, although we're unsure that Musk still holds 63% as he did after the funding raise. So when you add it all up, how close do we get to $200 billion? If you add up all the inflated valuations for the companies, you get to about $166.35 billion if you accept the current valuations for each company, which is well short of the $200 billion claim, but keeps them in the top five of the billionaire rankings. However, if you run comparables on the private companies, take his leverage position in Tesla into account and realize that Twitter is underwater, that number drops to $45.4393 billion and Musk would wind up at number 25 spot behind Charles Koch and family. That's for as long as the Tesla stock holds at the 180 mark. If Tesla stock ever corrects itself to be more in line with a legacy automaker, Musk would likely disappear completely from the top 100. The only thing propping up Musk's ranking for the time being is his ability mainly through hype to dictate the unsupported valuations of his private companies because as long as he can manipulate these numbers, he can make this number anything he wants. That will change if he ever IPOs SpaceX, and very likely not change in his favor once the books are laid bare as a publicly traded company. As we've demonstrated, when it comes to determining the net worth of a paper billionaire investing in his own private companies, it is not nearly as straightforward as you might think. However, going through his company valuations in this manner, using comparables, will give you a much more realistic idea of what Musk could actually be worth if he were, for any reason whatsoever, required to liquidate his holdings, say to pay off a $258 billion RICO action launched against him and his companies by pissed off Dogecoin investors. And while Musk may and probably does have other significant assets out there, despite claiming he no longer owns any properties or homes, the question we would have to ask is, do any of them have multi-billion dollar valuations that could significantly affect this total? Probably not. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. We've been wanting to do this one for a while and just needed the right push to get it done. Musk dropping down from the number one rank of wealthiest men in the world gave us that incentive. If you have any comments to make or think you have a better methodology to more accurately determine Musk's net worth, that's what the comment section is for. After leaving your comment, please share this with your friends, give the episode a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell so that you'll know when The Common Sense Skeptic returns.